Hi guys, how are you? I thought I'd record a small video, a short video on uh, the question that we had, uh, which was one of them was um, should animal be kept in zoos? So I have a template here for persuasive writing, and I thought I'd record the video so that you know the steps I took to produce this persuasive writing response before. I get you to copy this down in class. So, um, for this particular, uh, we are developing the, um, for this particular response, I should say, for, we are developing and stretching the disposition of reasoning. So you can see here. Uh, now, in order for us to start with a strong um, statement, um, we, there's some suggestions here in our um, sheet. Um, how do we start in a powerful way to engage our audience's attention from the start? Um, so I came up with this. How would you feel if you were not allowed to ever leave home and meet other people and enjoy activities that help you develop a strong mind and body? That is a bit of a thought-provoking question or um, a rhetorical question. Unfortunately, animals encaged in our zoos face a similar stressful situation. Now, I'm going to state then a statement of my views. In my opinion, animals should not be kept in zoos. That states my position quite clearly. And then I need to state my thesis, which is same, very similar to my opinion except that it's broken down into three parts. My three main points are um, added here. Firstly, it is highly detrimental to their well-being because breeding in captivity is not always effective. Also, so I'm just perhaps going to use a different color uh, so that you can see what my second one is. Also, zoos do not provide natural habitats and most importantly, they put unnecessary stress on animals. So I'm going to highlight that in a different color. Okay, so that is my introduction. I am adding a hook. I am adding a clear statement with my views. And then I am adding my thesis with my three main points. Now, I'm going to go to my first paragraph. I need to develop those three, one, two, three different points in my three different paragraphs. So my peel paragraph one, this is what I would have used in my fishbone um, template that you've been working on. So this is my first point. My first point says, keeping animal in cages or roaming in a limited space in zoos and making them breed with available partners is not always effective. So I'm gonna highlight that yellow. That's my first point. What is my second point? I'm going to take you to my second paragraph so you can see my second point. It says, additionally, zoos do not provide a safe environment and do not replicate the living conditions animals have in the wild, which can have negative consequences on your animal's well-being. So it has to do with the environment. And my last point in my third paragraph is, lastly, it is well documented that animals can suffer enormous amount of stress and anxiety when living in zoos. So my third point is about stress. Okay, so how do I elaborate on my point in each of those paragraphs? So let's have a quick look at paragraph one. So again, I have already stated my topic sentence or my point one, which is um, just keeping animals in cages or roaming in a limited space that they're given, of course, and making them breed with available partners is not always effective. Okay, so I'm going to elaborate on that idea of having those partners, okay, and that that's not always effective. So these programs are not cost effective and limit generic diversity. Okay, I'm going to give an example to that. I'm going to highlight that in a different color. Okay, for example. Morning. 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 
For example, some rhinoceros, such as the endangered species, can be hard to reproduce in the zoos and the process costs a fortune to maintain over time. Um, then the last one that I'm going to say is, sorry, uh, therefore, it is important, sorry guys, uh, just an interruption from a family member. Um, therefore, it is important for animal welfare organizations to invest time and money into programs that can be carried out in the wild instead of in zoos. So this is basically, I'm just linking back to my topic center. So I'm using the same color. Um, it is important that, you know, people actually look after those animals and just invest money in those programs that can be carried out in the wild instead of just placing animals in zoos. Okay. All right. Moving on to my paragraph two. Uh, I got additionally zoos do not provide a safe environment and do not replicate the living conditions animals have in the wild, which can have negative consequences on the animal's well-being. I'm giving an example here. As an example, or elaboration it's more called. Um, it is extremely difficult to replicate the natural environment an, an, an elephant is used to living in, of course, because they walk so many miles, okay? So I'm actually giving the example here. Ele elephants can walk up to 50 kilometers a, a day and they travel in packs of 30 or 40, whereas in zoos they are limited to two or three maximum. This can also have an adverse impact on the animal's ability to mate and run freely to feed as well as maintaining the healthy social interactions needed in a pack. So I'm providing a specific example here of how bad animals feel being on their own or being with just two or three elephants around. It's not enough. Okay, I'm now linking back to my, my key point, which is that the zoos do not provide a safe environment for animals. As, and is uh, specifically for elephants. For the reasons above, there is no doubt I am, uh, you know, using high modality here. I'm being strong and I'm saying there is no doubt that zoos are not the best place for animals to live in and as such should not exist. Okay, I'm going on to my last paragraph now. I hope I have enough time to complete the recording because these videos are very short. Okay, lastly, it is documented that animals can suffer enormous amount of stress, amounts, yeah, that's correct, amounts of stress and anxiety when living in zoos. Okay, so let me elaborate on that. I am saying here, animals can develop a number of strange behaviors and feelings of depression or anxiety. Can we be specific as to what that means? All right, I'm going to be a little bit more specific. I'm going gi to give an example there. When animals live in zoos, their natural habitats, sorry, their natural habits is in this case, so it means behavior, and behavior are inhibiting, inhibited sorry, due to the change in their natural environment, which can cause a condition called zoocosis. I actually did some research to find this out an equivalent to OCD in humans. This means they are unable to mate or hunt as they, as they do in the wild. Another example is their lack of privacy because their habitats are much smaller, which, which can also cause depression and other obsessive behaviors. I did some research and I found that out, which was quite interesting. Um, overall, it is clear that the added stress on animals is a strong argument to ban zoos, okay? So I am giving very specific examples there. See ya. Okay, so conclusion, what is my conclusion here? In conclusion, animals would better, would be better off, sorry, I'm just gonna highlight that, would be better off if they're allowed to live, breed and hunt in their natural environments. Um, I am restating my position here. What is a summary of this? I'm going to give a bit of a summary of all those um, arguments that I put forth before. 
Animals should not live in zoos since their breeding is ineffective, the space they live in is not the same as their natural environment, and it puts untold stress on animals. And I am adding a big finish there. The big finish is this. It is cruel, inhumane, and unacceptable about, you know, I'm just saying as a conclusion. It is cruel, inhumane, and unacceptable. Do something to advocate for these voiceless victims. I am using three strong adjectives there, which are uh, triples, and I am saying they are voiceless victims. I am using an alliteration there, just in case my audience didn't get my point. I have provided enough evidence that says these animals should not be allowed to be engaged and be in, in a zoo. There's so much evidence in the research and in everything I have provided that says it is cruel. Let's not do this. Okay, so can you see that all of that provides a very good um, response? It is cohesive, it is coherent. And I've used pathos, logos, and ethos. I have used some evidence uh, that comes from hard data, from research. I've also used pathos um, when I use my opening uh, rhetorical question there. Um, some of, for example, the, the last part, my last um, paragraph, basically makes the animals look like humans because they feel like humans. So... I am appealing to the pathos there as well. Make people feel sorry for the animals, okay? Um, and ethos, yes, I have researched this. I got proof, look at zoocosis. That is a word that comes from a jargon from a biologist uh, from these sciences. I am provided evidence. I am um, um, looking at the aspect of the ethos, targeting that as well. Okay, so I hope that's helpful and it provides you a bit of a roadmap as to how to tackle your own persuasive response. You don't have to do the same topic. Uh, you can do the, the climate change one if you wish um, or any, any other one. We've only practiced two so far, uh, but uh, this is a work that will be due, um, if not this week, because we have camp the following week. Um, so you need to get started uh, drafting this response. Okay. Thank you, boys. I hope you have a great day today. Bye-bye.